So can you all see my screen now? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma okay, good. Okay. So I'll straight away start from the gradient. Remember in my in our last class, we had started dif vector differentiation, discussed about how a vector which is not a constant but dependent on some parameter, how it is differentiated. And then we spoke about partial differentiation of vectors. And finally, I told you about the vector differential operator. What is the form of the vector differential operator? and how it operates in three different ways. So we saw uh, that, okay. So we saw that when, um, so we saw that when the vector differential operator acts on a scalar, we get a vector and when it acts on us. Okay, okay, so this is the vector differential operator, the Greek capital letter nabla, and it is called the grad or del operator. And we saw that the three primary operations are once when it operates on a scalar and converts it into a vector, and the process is called taking the gradient of the scalar. Then it can operate on a vector and if you take a dot product of the grad operator with a vector, then you get a scalar. And this is called taking the divergence of the vector. And finally, again, it is acting on a vector, but now you are taking the cross product of the operator with a vector so that the result is a vector. And this process is called taking the curl of the vector. Okay. So three primary operations are possible with the del operator. One, on a scalar, converting it into a vector called the gradient. One on a vector, converting into a, it into a, it's not converting it into a scalar, but the result is a scalar called the divergence of the vector. And finally, operation on a vector resulting in a different vector and the process is called taking the curl. So as I told you that now one by one, we are going to see how these three operations work. We are going to see mathematically uh, what we should do when we are asked to take the gradient or divergence or curl of a scalar or a vector. And most importantly, we are going to understand what is the physical meaning of these operations. When the grad operator is converting a scalar into a vector, what is the physical significance of it? What is actually happening in reality? And similarly, we'll discuss for the divergence and the curl one by one. So we discussed a little bit about fields. Okay, and I, I told you that we are going to deal with fields when we are operating the vector differential operation operator on either a scalar or a vector because we are primarily going to deal with um, a scalar or a vector that is not constant, okay? And therefore, we define the field uh, which is... So the term field is used to mean both the region and the value of the physical quantity in that region. So we will be talking about scalar fields or vector fields like temperature, magnetic field, etc. Okay. So I told you a little bit about uh, an example of a field like the gravitational potential energy, which is an example of a scalar field. And then finally, I told you, I started my discussion on the gradient. Okay. So today, class will be dedicated entirely to this operator that is the gradient. We'll see how mathematically the working of a gradient uh, takes place. Um, and then we'll go, go on to the significances of the gradient, okay? So if phi function of x, y, z is a scalar field, then phi 
is defined at each point x, y, z in a certain region of space and it is differentiable at each point x, y, z in a certain region of space. Then the gradient of the function phi is also called grad phi and it is defined like this. Okay, So grad phi is, see now I am no longer using the representation or equivalent sign, I am writing equal to because here grad is operating on phi and here we have this form of grad operating on phi. So basically grad phi is equal to del phi del x i cap plus del phi del y j cap plus del phi del z k cap and you can see that we are taking partial derivatives of phi because phi is a function of x, y and z. So when you are taking derivative with respect to x only or y only or z only then we are referring to partial derivatives. Okay? So basically grad phi is a vector field which means that the grad operator converts a scalar field into a vector field. And we did this uh, very simple example to understand what taking the gradient is. You all did it in the last class. So if phi is a function like this, x square plus x square y square z square, then grad phi is something that looks like this. Okay. So you differentiate first with respect to x, making it the coefficient of i cap, then with respect to y, making it the coefficient of j cap, and finally with respect to z, making it the coefficient of k cap. So starting from a scalar field, you take the gradient and the result is a vector field. All right. So we'll soon see what this means. But before that, let us do a few problems which is concerned only with the mathematics because you will be asked to take the gradient of different functions. So let us see what are the steps that we follow to take the gradient of different functions. Okay. So simple case let us see how to find grad r where r is r position vector x i cap plus y j cap plus z k cap and r without the vector sign is simply the magnitude of the position vector r which means square root of x square plus y square plus z square okay so what do we have to do grad r therefore means grad of this scalar function grad of the magnitude of r and therefore if you write down the form of grad in the Cartesian coordinate system you get del del, del x of root over x square plus y square plus z square that is the coefficient of i cap similarly del del y of root over x square plus y square plus z square j cap del del z of root over x square plus y square plus z square k cap. Okay. Okay. So I have done this differentiation. It's not a very diff difficult differentiation, of course, easy for you all who have done a lot of differentiation in your 11 and 12 mathematics, uh, solving the probably the SN the big fat book of SN the calculus. So um, del del x of this only that you have to remember that we are doing partial derivative in each case. So when you are differentiating with respect to x, you keep y and z constant. So the first term comes since you have a square root, so half into x squared, so 2x, and the term inside becomes x squared plus y squared plus z squared, whole to the power, one, half minus 1, so it becomes minus half, i cap, all right? Similarly, the second term is half into 2y, x square plus y square plus z square whole to the power minus half j cap plus half into 2z x square plus y square plus z square whole to the power minus half k cap. Okay? I'm sure every uh, everybody understands this step. It's just differentiating this function of x with respect to x. Uh, so you can write to simplify this uh, over here. So all the twos cancel out. So from this term you have x i cap in the numerator and in the denominator you have root over x square plus y square plus z square. Similarly, in the second term you have y j cap in the numerator and root over x square plus y square plus z square in the denominator. And finally, in the third term 
sorry this will be z i'm so sorry this will be z okay <coughs> please note this <coughs> down by mistake i have typed uh, y over here <coughs> excuse me so this will be z all right so z k cap root over x square plus y square plus z square um okay in the denominator so what do we have in the numerator we have x i cap plus y j cap plus z k cap okay so that is nothing but the position vector r and in the numerator we have root over x square plus y square plus z square which is nothing but mod r so grad of r is equal to vector r divided by magnitude r which is what is a vector divided by its magnitude can someone unmute and answer the unit vector. vector the unit vector very good so grad r is equal to r cap so when you take the gradient of the position vector you get the unit vector in the direction of the position vector okay this is a very important result and this shows you how you take the gradient of a certain uh, function in this case which is r which is a function of x y and z okay next we'll find out the gradient of r square where once again r is simply the magnitude of the position vector given by root over x square plus y square plus z square okay so once again grad r is del del x of x square plus y square plus z square i cap plus del del y of x square plus z y square plus z square j cap plus del del z of x square plus y square plus z square k cap so it will be simpler this time so grad r is from the first term you get 2x i cap from the second term you get 2y j cap and from the third term you get 2z k cap so you take the two outside inside you are left with x i cap plus y j cap plus z k cap so grad r is equal to 2r vector which in terms of the unit vector can be written as 2r r cap okay so in this manner i can keep on giving you different forms functions of r and i can ask you to take the gradient and you can keep on taking the gradient um, but what happens is for simple for example in the last example okay in the first example here the simple expression of r that you have been asked to take the gradient of the finally when you arrive at this result it is very good but in between there is a little bit of not a lot of but a little bit of cumbersome calculations that we have to handle right so you can understand that as i give you more complicated functions of r taking the grad or the gradient <coughs> in this manner will become more and so for example i ask you to t give me the gradient of r to the power 3 by 2 or i ask you to find the gradient of log r okay so it will not it is not difficult but it is definitely cumbersome dealing with the square root of three numbers uh, okay taking the derivative etc so what we are going to do is we are going to we know how to handle this you can look up these examples you have to do them by yourself on a sitting with a pen and paper uh, only then will you get a feel of how to do about go about this but we'll what we'll do now is we'll find a general formula for finding out the gradient of fr where fr is any function of the magnitude of the position vector r okay you'll see the when i when we find out the general formula you will see the uh, sort of i would say fun in it uh, that you'll get when you are asked 
gradient to find out the gradient of any given function of r. All right. So first let us derive the general formula. So obviously grad f by now you have come across this formula several times grad of f. I'm not writing fr every time for simplicity. So grad of f is del f del x i cap plus del f del y j cap plus del f del z k cap, right? So we write each of this term del f del x, del f del y and del f del z in this manner. Del f del x is written as del f del r into del r del x. Del f del y is written as del f del r into del r del y and del f del z is written as del f del r into del r del z. Now f is a function of r. So in place of partial derivative here you could have also written df dr. Okay? But r is a function of x, y and z. So here you have to write the partial derivatives. All right. So df dx is written in this manner. df dy is written in this manner and df dz is written in this manner. This is just a little bit of um, playing with the terms in order to so serve our purpose. Okay. So now from these three terms we can take df dr common. Right. So df dr we take outside. And since this is the first derivative of f with respect to r, I write it as f prime r. All right. So inside, therefore, you are left with del del x of r, which I have now expanded and written as x square plus y square plus z square root i cap del del y of root over x square plus y square plus z square j cap and del del z of root over x square plus y square plus z square k cap. This thing we have just done in the last to last sum where we were taking the gradient of r. Okay, So this is df dr which we have taken outside and written as f prime r. So what happens here? f prime r is outside. The first term as we had done in the last to last problem half into 2x x square plus y square plus z square whole to the power minus half i cap. Similarly, half into 2y, half into 2z, etc, etc. So finally, we get in the simpler, simpler form xi cap plus yj cap. Once again, I have written y over here. This will be z. Please, I beg your pardon and sorry. So xi cap plus yj cap plus zk cap divided by root over x square plus y square plus z square. So xi cap plus yj cap plus zk cap is r vector and in the denominator you have magnitude of r. So this can be written as f primed r r cap. So what have we got here? Gradient of any function of r where r is the magnitude of the position vector is simply the first derivative of that function with respect to r multiplied by the unit vector r. Okay, So you have got a formula for taking the gradient of any function of r. All right. So you can see that the gradient of such a function of r will always be a vector which is in the direction of r because the direction is given by r cap which is the unit vector in the direction of r. So now that we have got this formula we will find out the gradient of certain functions of r. All right. Actually it would have been better if I could show you uh, taking the gradient both using the formula and without the formula but it would take a lot of time. So I will show you how to take the gradient just with the formula. If you want, you can try out taking the gradient without the formula from first principle and compare the 
methodology to see why using the formula makes our life much more easier. Okay, so problem is find gradient of f when a f r equal to one by r, b f r equal to log r, and c f r equal to r to the power n. So I've given you three functions of r. All right. So will you try out using the formula? This is the formula. Grad of f r equal to f primed r r cap. So will you do the first one? Can you do quickly and unmute uh, and tell me the answer? I mean, you don't even have to do it considering the formula. Are you doing the problem? The moment you finish, please unmute and tell me. Has anyone completed the first one? Come on, what is the first derivative? What is f prime r when f r is one by r? Madam, faster a to uh, minus of r cap by r square. Minus of r cap by r square. f prime r is minus f r is one by r, so grad of f r is grad of one by r, so it is minus one by r square r cap. Very easy, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. R Second one. R cap by r r cap by r again very easy f r is log r so grad of f r is grad of log r so one f prime r is one by r so r cap by r and the third one uh what are r to the power n to yes so, n r to the power n minus one by r, r into r cap now by r r have na n r to the power n minus one r cap Okay, so you see if the same problems you had used without, I mean, if, the, if you go to do the same problem without using this formula, just by taking del del r of 1 by del del x of 1 by r, so that would mean del del x of x square plus y square plus z square whole to the bar minus half. Okay. So, of course, doable and easy to, but the moment you use a lot of x and y and z and square roots, etc., and to the power minus halves, etc., the problem becomes cumbersome. Okay. Whereas if you use this formula, you just, I mean, you know how to take derivatives, first derivatives, you know the function, you take the first derivative and you give the answer. So it becomes a one line, basically one line solution. Okay, so uh, what I suggest is if in your exam you are asked to find the gradient of a function of r, okay, suppose you are asked to find the gradient of r to the power uh, say minus 5 by 2. So you will check the marks given. Okay, listen to me very carefully. In the exam, if you are asked to do such a problem, what you will do is you will check the marks given. Say if it is given two marks, find out grad of fr when fr is log r and it contains two marks. Okay, so what will you do? You straight away write this formula. We know that grad f equal to f prime r r cap. Therefore, this you will get two on two. But suppose the same problem, say it carries four marks. Then it is not suggested that you straight away, you know, then something more is expected from you, not just writing the formula and deriving it and then uh, doing it in one step. Then what I suggest is you, more marks is allotted, 
you do this derivation because this is a common derivation for any given f for any form of f you this is the way you have to uh, i mean this is how you will arrive at this formula right so if such a sum is given and you see it carries say four marks then what you do is you derive the formula then you say so in this case fr is log r thus this is the result ami ki bojhate perechi ki ami bolte chaichi erokom problem jodi porikkhay ashe dhoro du number dewa thaklo tahole ki korbe straight away formula ta likhbe ekhane ei khetre fr is this so ei answer peye gelam du line e onko hoye gelo tumi du number peye gele kintu dhoro porikkhay ei same problem er jonno char number dewa ache তখন কিন্তু দু লাইনে অঙ্কটা করে দিলে এক্সামিনার এখানে লিখে দিতে পারে ফ্রম ওয়ে ডি ডু গেট দিস ফর্মুলা মানে তখন তোমার থেকে চার নম্বর দেওয়া হচ্ছে মানে একটু এক্সট্রা কিছু এক্সপেক্ট করা হচ্ছে তখন তুমি কি করবে তুমি ইদার তুমি ওই এক্স ওয়াই জেড ইউজ করে করতে পারো উইচ উইল বিকাম কাম্বারসাম কিন্তু জাস্ট এই ফর্মুলাটা বার করার তো একটাই মেথড একটাই ডেরিভেশন যেটা আমি আগে স্লাইডে দেখিয়েছি তুমি ফর্মুলাটা আগে ডিরাইভ করবে ফর এনি গিভেন ফাংশন এফ আর গ্র্যাড এফ আর ইস দিস কিভাবে ডিরাইভ করে দিল চার পাঁচ লাইন লিখে ইন দিস প্রবলেম এফ আর ইজ সো অ্যান্ড সো সো দিস ইজ দ্য রেজাল্ট বোঝা গেছে হ্যাজ এভরিবডি আন্ডারস্টুড ক্লিয়ারলি হোয়াট আই এম ট্রাইং টু সে ওকে হ্যাঁ ম্যাম यस ম্যাম ওকে so okay very good so in this manner you can be given any form of r any function of r and asked to take its gradient all right and now by now you know how to do that so you know the formula of gradient you know the how to take the gradient of any function of r so all this was mathematics absolutely purely mathematical part of gradient now we'll see what is the physical interpretation of taking the gradient of a scalar okay that is called the directional derivative and we'll soon see why it is called the directional derivative what it means etc so for this when i say this you will remember how i try to explain what fields are to you so let us consider a metal bar which is heated at one end all right remember i told you how temperature is different at different points uh, as as we are nearer or further away from the furnace and how that we, why therefore the temperature is a field so let us denote t x y z to be the temperature function giving the temperature at different points all right now if i ask you a question that what is the rate of change of the temperature with distance from the furnace what will be your answer what are the possible observations that can happen either the temperature rises in some direction so if you are probably going from the further end towards the end nearer to the furnace you will see that the temperature rises if you go on in the other direction that is you start from a point nearer to the furnace and go in the other direction then temperature will fall so in some directions temperature rises in other directions temperature falls and possibly the rate of rise or fall in different directions is also different if the bar is not a homogeneous isotropic uh, material then this rate may also be different in different directions all right so we can infer that the rate of change of temperature with distance depends upon the direction in which we are moving so if i ask you what is the rate of change of temperature you will counter ask me ma'am which direction are you talking about okay are you asking me what is the uh, rate of change of temperature if we go from uh, near the furnace to the other end or the opposite direction okay so if i ask you a question i also have to give you the direction in which i am asking you to find out the rate of temperature 
rate of change of temperature. All right. So this thing that I have just talked about is quantified by a parameter called the directional derivative. Now, how do we find the directional derivative? Okay. So we want to observe the change in the temperature, say denoted by delta T with change in distance delta S. Correct? How with distance, how with a certain small change in distance, the temperature changes. So this is what we are trying to find out. Limit delta S tend to 0, delta T by delta S, which is written by dt dS from our concept of differentiation. First derivative of temperature with respect to distance. And we see that this is the rate of change, but we also want to know the direction in which this quantity is maximum. So this will give us the rate of change of temperature with distance, but we also know that this rate of change is not same in all directions. So although this quantity is a scalar, but it is direction dependent. So we have got a scalar which is dependent on direction. So that is what we are going to see. So this quantity dt ds is the mathematical expression for the directional derivative. Okay. When you are asked to find the directional derivative of a function, then you find the derivative of the function with respect to distance and we will see how the direction is also uh, playing a very important role because I mean qualitatively you have understood I hope that this is a quantity which is direction dependent right now we'll see how quantitatively also we can see that it is a direction dependent quantity although it is a scalar by itself but it depends on the direction this is almost like uh, suppose you are um, you have a hill suppose you have a hill okay now hills are not uh, isotropic in all directions right the, the slope is more in certain directions the slope is uh, lesser in certain other directions so suppose you are trying to climb a hill okay and suppose you are you are climbing for the first time suppose you've gone for trekking and you want you are doing that for the first time so what would you prefer you would prefer the steeper side or would you prefer a more gentle slope? What would you prefer? Gentle slope, madam. Gentle slope. Okay. So even so, so what I'm trying to say is that even when you are going up a hill, you the the way different people go climb up a hill are different. So, you know, people who are who have who are pros in trekking, who have done who are veterans who have done it for a for several times, they would prefer to go up faster. Because the faster they finish a particular trek trekking summit, the more sponsors they will get for the next trekking expedition. OK, so they would go and find out from, say, the local Sherpas which is the faster way up because the slope is not a difficulty for them. So they would prefer a direction in which this DTDS where T in their case would be height is faster. Whereas if I go trekking, for example, I have only um, gone to Sandaku in a Land Rover. I have never walked, uh, walked up. So if I go trekking, then I would prefer a slope. I would ask the Sherpa that tell me which is the more gen gentle slope. I don't want to go fast, but I want to go up. So I would prefer the gentle slope. Okay. So why I am telling you so many things? Because I want you to realize that this quantity itself is a scalar, but it depends on the direction. All right how it is related to the gradient. So phi x, y, z is my scalar field and we want to find d phi ds at a point 
fixed point x0, y0, z0 in a certain direction. So, standing at the bottom of the hill, I would want to calculate this quantity and see which is the fastest or slowest direction of this rate so that I can choose my way up. All right. So this is what I'm trying to tell you. X0, Y0, Z0 is the beginning point, fixed point, And X, Y, Z is a floating point. Okay. So I, would, I am trying to calculate D phi ds in a certain direction, which is given by this vector. So S is the magnitude. S is the distance from the beginning point to the end point, And U cap is the direction of this vector A unit vector along this direction all right so we start at x0 y0 z0 move a distance s in the direction u cap up to a certain point x y z okay so u since here the direction is fixed now for the time being i'm talking about a fixed direction so that direction u cap is given by a i cap plus b j cap plus c k cap where a b c are constants okay so the displacement is given by the vector a equal to s u cap, where s is the magnitude and u cap is the direction. Now, obviously, for this, you know this uh, preliminary coordinate geometry where you can write a vector in terms of the uh, starting and the terminal coordinates. So a vector I am writing in this manner, x minus x0 i cap plus y minus y0 j cap plus z minus z0 k cap. And this is equal to s u cap, which is a i cap plus b j cap plus c k cap multiplied by the magnitude s. All right. So now comparing the coefficients of i, j and k from both sides, we can write down x equal to x0 plus a s y equal to y0 plus bs and z equal to z0 plus cs. I hope everybody can understand how I have got this. I have just compared the coefficients of i, j and k from both sides. So what has happened? I can now, so phi was a function of x, y, z, but each of x, y and z are a function of the same parameter s. So I can write phi a function of s only. So I've converted phi, which was a function of x, y, z, to a function of a single parameter s because each of x and y and z are functions of the parameter s. See, because x0 and a are constants, y0 and b are constants, z0 and c are constants. So the moment phi becomes a function of s, I can write d phi ds as equal to del phi del x into dx ds plus del phi del y into dy ds plus del phi del z into dz ds. So when phi is a function of, since phi is a function of x, y and z, I am using del for this partial derivation, whereas x is a function of s only, so I am using d. So these are certain things which are very subtle, but you have to pay very important attention to these small things. So if you write del over here also, then the examiner would, you know, be of the opinion. So this person has not really understood the difference between uh, total derivative and partial derivative. Because x is a function of s only, you do not need to write partial derivative over here. Clear? So, and once again, I keep repeating this, that all that you are seeing on this, on these slides, you have to do them by hand on pen and paper. Only then will you get a feel of what I am saying. Okay? So, I have done each and every step for you to understand but your task is to repeat those steps sit with a pen and paper and do this in order to understand okay and get clarified so d phi ds can be written in this manner 
but it is d phi ds we are trying to find out right directional derivative is given by d phi ds now from these equations you see ds dx ds is a similarly dy ds is b and dz ds is c so d phi ds becomes equal to del phi del x a plus del phi del y b plus del phi del z c now what i do is i write this in a different form i write i expand this expression and write each product in such a way that this expression becomes the dot product of two vectors see i have written del phi del x i cap plus del phi del y j cap plus del phi del z k cap and i have written a i cap plus b j cap plus c k cap and then taken the dot product of the two if you take the dot product of these two vectors you will get this expression but what does this first expression stand for a first bracketed modde je expression ta ache etar mane ki what is this e bolbe mam eta mam grad phi grad phi and what is this a i cap plus b j cap plus c k cap u cap unit vector so this becomes equal to grad phi dot u all right so basically the directional derivative d phi ds is equal to grad phi dotted with u cap so if you are you have been asked to take the directional derivative of a function at a certain point in a certain direction you see that the directional derivative is the dot product of the gradient of that function with that given direction so now we have got a mathematical expression for the directional derivative in terms of the gradient of that function so since d phi ds is grad phi dot u cap therefore d phi ds is you write down the formula of dot product mod grad phi mod u into cosine of the angle between the two mod u is 1 so this is grad phi cos theta where theta is the angle between the direction of the unit vector and the direction of the gradient obviously d phi ds is the projection of grad phi on u and the largest value of d phi ds will be along grad phi because when theta is zero so when there is no angle between grad phi and u that gives you the maximum value of d phi ds right so the highest rate of change of phi with s is along the direction of the gradient which means the gradient of a scalar field at a given point gives the direction of maximum rate of change of that scalar field at that point this is the formal definition of gradient of a scalar field very very important now when i mean usually even when i was a student of first year and i was taught gradient i had learnt up this definition from the book i really did not understand frankly because no one had referred mary wass's book and no one had explained this in this manner i have learnt this while teaching okay this derivation i have taken from mary wass's book and i feel that once you learn in this manner once you follow these steps of finding out the expression of d phi ds then you do not any longer require to learn this up ar mukhosto korar proyojon nei to dekhai jacche d phi ds er expression peyecho grad phi dot u cap tar mane ki je d phi ds er value maximum kokhon hobe jokhon 
এদের দুজনের মধ্যে অ্যাঙ্গেলটা জিরো হবে তার মানে কি যখন ওটা গ্র্যাড ফাই এর ডিরেকশানেই হবে তার মানে when you have a function phi and you are asked to take its gradient what you are basically doing is you are finding the direction of maximum rate of change of that function at that given point okay which is why the gradient is a vector quantity because it is giving you the direction of maximum change the rate of change is given by d phi ds but the direction of maximum rate of change is given by the direction is this clear to everybody do you yes, want me to explain this uh, again because this is a very very basic concept and um, most students know how to take gradient will be able to do sums but my observation from taking uh, vivas for over several years i have i have this feeling that the understanding is missing which is why i have spent so much time on this particular topic because you know usually uh, normally with due respect to all my teachers vector porate sob theke kom shomoy lage teacher will just write down the formula tell you the definition show you how to do sums and that's it usually because that serves the purpose tumi porikkhay kintu anko korte parbe but i feel that physics is not only about doing problems but also understanding the concept the conceptual understanding is very very important and that is missing which is why i spend so much time and i hope that you will you have got uh, the answer about why the operator gradient is converting the scalar into a vector field and what is the meaning of that uh, vector it simply gives you the direction in which that scalar function changes in the fastest possible way okay so we'll do two sums based on whatever we have just learned example one is find the directional derivative of a scalar field phi equal to so and so at the point 1 2 minus 1 along the direction of a vector this so if you are asked to find the directional derivative you need two more uh, pieces of information one is the point at which you have to find it out and two is the direction in which you have to find it find it out okay so i'll just show you the steps that you need to follow for doing such a sum and then you can do similar sums from spiegel so step 1 is find the unit vector along the given direction simple u cap is a by magnitude a which in this case is 2i cap minus 2j cap plus k cap divided by 3 2 square plus 2 square power yes uh, root 9 which is 3 unit vector power gallo step 2 find the gradient at the given point so let us find the gradient first grad of x square y plus x z so uh, 2x y plus z i cap plus x square j cap plus x k cap okay grad er formula ta ekdom mukhosto rakhte hobe del phi del x i cap plus del phi del y j cap plus del phi del z k cap pay gelam grad now we'll find gradient at the point 1 2 minus 1 ta mane ei jaygay এই এক্স ওয়াই জেড এর জায়গায় তোমাকে ওয়ান টু মাইনাস ওয়ান বসাতে হবে সো দ্যাট ইউ গেট দিস ভেক্টার থ্রি আই ক্যাপ প্লাস জে ক্যাপ প্লাস কে ক্যাপ সো ইউ গট ইউ ক্যাপ ইউ গট গ্র্যাড ফাই অ্যাট দ্য গিভেন পয়েন্ট সো স্টেপ থ্রি ফর্মুলা অফ ডিরেকশনাল ডেরিভেটিভ গ্র্যাড ফাই ডট ইউ ক্যাপ সো গ্র্যাড ফাই ইজ দিস ডটেড উইথ ইউ ক্যাপ ইজ দিস অ্যান্ড দ্য আনসার ইজ ফাইভ বাই থ্রি so you see the directional derivative is a scalar what does this give you this gives you the rate of change of the function phi but where at this point and along this direction at a different point and in a different direction this rate of change would have a different value even for the same function phi okay so have you understood the steps for doing this problem 
Yes, madam. Yes. So when you are asked to do a problem in your exam, you know, most of the copies that we find, there is no writing. You know, they they just just the formula is written and the sum is done. From which I feel that uh, the person has only learned how to do the problem. But if you follow these steps, ताहले मुखस्त करार कोनो दौर करने. ये ये टाइ तापुरे ये टा ये बारे आमी formula फेल्ला. Best. I've got my answer. Okay. Next we'll take a physical problem. Okay. So the temperature T of a body at any point is given by this function T equal to x square minus y square plus x y z plus two seventy three. It's a constant. So Pran's question is: In which direction is the temperature increasing most rapidly at the point minus one two three and at what rate? So here you have been given phi and you have been given a position in space. And you have been asked to find the direction of fastest increase. So, what will give me the direction of fastest increase? Grad t. Grad t. So, step one: find grad t at minus one, two, three. Use the formula. Grad t is equal to two x plus uh, y z i cap minus two y plus x z j cap plus x y k cap. 273 is of course a constant, so doesn't play any part. So at minus 1, 2, 3, this becomes 4i cap minus 7j cap minus 2k cap. I hope I'm in calculation. I'm bhool kori ne. Because usually I'm calculation. I'm vision bhool kori. I'm on ke khub kancha. Calculation take to tomra check kori ne. Ha. So I hope this is correct. And then, so grad t. This is the required direction of fastest change because, by definition, grad of a function at a given point gives you the direction in which the function changes with most rapidness. Okay, so this is the direction of fastest change. You've got your answer to the first question. Step two is they ask you the rate. So what will be the rate? Mod of grad t, root over sixteen plus forty nine plus four four, which is root sixty nine. So this is the rate at which the change is taking place. So if you, so basically this will give you the uh, directional derivative dt ds at this point. All right. So magnitude gives the rate of change at this position. Now suppose I ask you for this question. If I add another question here, which is the direction of heat flow? Can someone tell me at this position itself? Which is the direction of flow of heat? देखी तो क्यों बोलते बारो की ना? मैं मीटर में ग्रेड टीयर इसे तो डिरेक्शन ही जाबे है तो पर मैक्सिमम जो दी वैल्यू तो ग्रेड ऑफ चेंज है तो हमने जानी साधारण तो डिरेक्शनल जो दी हाई मतलब ग्रेड फाइव ग्रेड टीयर डिरेक्शन टा होता है रेट ऑफ चेंज ऑफ टेम्परेचर टेम्परेचर इंक्रीजिंग डिरेक्शन ताले रेट ऑफ हीट हीट फ्लो के डायरेक्शन कौन दिखा हुआ है जैसे कि टेम्परेचर इंक्रीज करे ना जैसे कि टेम्परेचर डिक्रीज करे इंक्रीज करे मैम ए हीट कम टेम्परेचर तक बेशी टेम्परेचर ही जाए ओ सॉरी सॉरी मैम हीट ओ सॉरी सॉरी मैम भूले गए थी को ताले उटे में ये डिक्रीज के खतरे हो बहुत हीट फ्ल ऐ तो ग्रेड टी बार पड़े चो मैडम मैडम माइनस ग्रेड माइनस ग्रेड टी माइनस ग्रेड टी इफ ग्रेड टी इज गिविंग यू द डायरेक्शन इन विच टेम्परेचर इज इंक्रीजिंग मोस्ट रैपिडली हीट विल फ्लो एक्सेक्टली इन द ऑपोजिट डायरेक्शन माइनस ग्रेड टी ओके सो दिस आर लिटिल क्वेश्चंस दैट मे बी एडेड टू सच अ प्र so this is the physical significance of the directional derivative. I'll take five more minutes uh, to give you the geometrical interpretation, and that then we will finish off with gradient. I mean, next class is on gradient. Take to khaniya dekha dite jai chhi na, ha? Five minute peshi nikchi. So suppose we have the equation of this form, phi equal to a constant. Okay, just just this one slide. 
how will this uh, how how do you think this represents the equation of a surface for example ax plus by plus cz equal to constant so basically phi eta hocche phi equal to constant this is the equation of a plane all of you know that then suppose x square plus y square plus z square equal to constant equation of a sphere once again this side can be written as phi equal to a constant okay so in this manner phi which is a function of x y z so earlier we were treating phi x y z as a field but if phi equal to a constant then that will be the equation of uh, any form of surface similarly you can take the surface of a cone you can take the surface of a cube in this manner this general equation can represent the uh, equation of a surface okay since phi is constant therefore d phi equal to 0 all right but we had seen when we were doing partial derivatives that if phi equal to phi x y z then d phi equal to del phi del x dx plus del phi del y dy plus del phi del z dz this is written in the partial derivative slide okay this is a formula that is true for partial derivatives now this therefore is equal to 0 since we since phi equal to constant and d phi equal to 0 so basically this expression becomes equal to 0 so once again i write this as a form of two vectors dotted together so i write this as del phi del x i cap plus del phi del y j cap plus del phi del z k cap dotted with dx i cap plus dy j cap plus dz k cap and this dot product is equal to 0 So as you can see, this it a key genius. Grad phi. Grad phi. Are it a key genius? Dx i k plus dy j k plus dz k k. Dr vector. Dr. So basically, what you've got is grad phi dot dr equal to zero. So the dot product of the gradient of the function phi, where phi represents uh, the the form of a surface. taken with the d the vector dr is equal to 0 so these are definitely perpendicular to each other so since we know that dr r being the position vector it lies on the surface it can be anywhere depending on its position it will change but it can it has to be on the surface that we are talking about dr is a vector that lies on the surface so grad phi is a vector that is always perpendicular to dr which means it is always perpendicular to the given surface so grad phi is the normal to the given surface at the specified position okay so physically we saw that if phi represents a scalar field then grad phi gives us the direction of fastest change of the field phi at a given position on the other hand geometrically we see that if phi equal to constant is the equation of a particular surface then grad phi at a position on the surface will give me the normal to the surface at that point clear so we have so now we know how to find gradient of a function we all know by now we have also discussed what are the significances of this function of this operation grad phi firstly it has a very important physical significance and i told you by giving examples of a, a person climbing a mountain or temperature on a an a non homogeneous in homogeneous and isotropic material um that is being heated at a point how grad phi decides the direction in which the function changes more rap most rapidly on the other hand it is of a very important uh, significance in geometry also because if a function if a surface is given then if you are asked to find the normal to the surface at any point the simplest thing that you have to do is find the gradient of that surface at that point and you'll get the normal at the given position okay so with that we have uh, comprehensively done 
the portion of gradient. In my next class, I'll move over to divergence and uh, if time permits, then we'll finish off curl two in our next class. All right. And in the meantime, I'll again give you some, uh, you will of course uh, do problems on gradient from Spigel. And I will also give you a few problems for your practice, which I'll send you um, before next class. All right. So with that, I'll stop recording.